It's dark, it's cold, it's gloomy. My brain is dark and cold and gloomy, just based on vibes. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I'm jealous, introspective, self-reflective. I can't believe I didn't make a fresh coffee for this video, who am I? Hello everybody, it's Sylvie. Welcome or welcome back to Tarot Magpie. I hope you're doing all kinds of good today. This video is going to be a response to Green Eyed Tarot and her recent video and new tag, Dex for the Descent. She posted this a couple of weeks ago and the premise is that we are moving from the light half to the dark half of the year, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. It's the autumn equinox, actually. This video should go up on the day of the equinox. So very timely, very appropriate. And the premise of this tag is you share the decks that accompany you through this journey into the descent and the dark and the shadowy uh, sort of aspects. And um, that obviously is gonna mean different things to different people. I don't personally have practices that I reserve for the darker half of the year or for any particular season, but winter is cold and dark where I live. I wanna retreat into my home because it's freaking cold outside. And I also kind of retreat into myself a little bit. The darker, gloomier months do bring about some darker, gloomier sort of moods and feelings as well. There is this kind of urge to, to draw inwards and retreat a little bit in the, the darker months. And so while that doesn't have any particular practice, it does sort of change or it affects the kind of decks that I want to work with. I treat tarot for myself as a very personal self-exploration, more kind of psychological type of tool. That's how I use it for me. And so when my mindset is feeling a certain way, when I'm in a certain kind of mood, then that obviously is going to impact the kind of or, or affect the choices that I make in what kind of decks I like to be using. So I'm gonna share those with you today. I will of course link Green Eyed Tarot and her original video in the description below. Go check that out. And I hope you enjoy. No particular order. The first deck that I thought of when I was thinking about decks for the descent, and I believe um, she also, Green Eyed Tarot also featured this in her video, unless I completely made that up. Um, but this is the Ritual Tarot. Because, because obviously, right? So the Ritual Tarot seemed like just such an obvious pick. It is kind of, uh, it's not dark and spooky, but it does have a bit of an intensity to it that feels appropriate for the like darker half of the year. Uh, where I live, like I say, I'm living up in Scotland. It gets cold, it gets dark, it gets kind of bitter with the wind, especially, my god, the wind here. <laughs> it um, it has a kind of intensity to it. This feels like it matches up with that quite well. And also there's the fact that I got this deck last December. So it, it came to me in a winter time. It feels, oh, here we go. There she is, she's gorgeous. Um, it feels appropriate to bring this out again in the winter time. It didn't feel inappropriate during the summer. I've, I've kind of pulled this out pretty consistently over the year. This death card in particular, there is something about the kind of clear blues that are throughout this deck. And this is obviously a collage deck. It's an analog collage. So there's lots of like nature photography, but there's something about the blues here that just make me think of a kind of cold, clear blue, wintry sky. I do associate this kind of, this kind of light blue with winter because it's kind of a, a cold, empty blue sky uh, with all with all the wind and the cold temperatures, but um, it just feels right. And there's also like here again with the blues, like it's beautiful. There is also something about the, I think I've, I've lovingly referred to this as like a chaotic kind of collage before, but there's something about the style of collage where it is, it is very collage, it's very put together, it's very, it's not trying to look like a single cohesive like illustration or anything. Like there are some collage decks I'm thinking of like the Golden Tarot by Cat Black, where it's a composite of different fine art pieces, but they're put together in such a way that it looks like it could be just one original image. This isn't doing that. This is 
very obviously created and there's like a, an element of surrealness, surreality. So what, what would be the word for that um, moment here for my other favorite card in the deck? I can't not point out my favorite cards in this deck. It feels wrong. But um, there's a surreal quality to this that also kind of matches up with the winter for me. Like I said uh, at the beginning in the intro, um, winter hits me hard emotionally. Um, I have the regular depression, so seasonal, seasonal bonus that I get in winter is like not fun uh, and and I do feel a little bit kind of ungrounded in the winter um I do like that does hit me in in such a way that I feel slightly less real in the winter I don't quite know how to explain it um and you know nothing I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to sound concerning um like it, it's all good we're all under control but it does affect me and I do feel a little bit less yeah I suppose I feel a little bit less real in the winter for lack of a better way of phrasing that and so these decks with that element of like surrealness surreality feels like it should be a word but I'm not sure it is but that feels like it, it speaks to that anyway it feels appropriate it feels like it's meeting me where I'm at and then also this is just such a good deck for if I do feel like doing some shadow work I do feel like diving into something and really like this is such a good deck to just sit with and see what comes up and see where my kind of psyche goes with things and the different connections that I make like it is it's a much more intuitive reader than a lot of the decks that I might otherwise use I always I said this in my um oh it was the like witchy fails fail tales tag uh sometimes I feel like I have absolutely no intuition and this is one of those decks where I, it can be a bit of a struggle sometimes to kind of get in that headspace but I get a lot out of reading this more intuitively and that just feels appropriate for the winter time for the dark and the shadowy season getting a little bit complex and a little bit complicated and very internal like I said I withdraw inwards in the winter as I think a lot of us do it's cold and dark so we stay physically inside and it can be a bit of a mentally emotionally shadowy time so we at least I withdraw a little bit into myself and so it's a good time to kind of work with that more intuition based practice so that is the ritual tarot all right, talking about that kind of surreal element of the ritual, the Raven's Dream Tarot is also on my list for that exact same reason. And this is an MJ Cullinane deck. I have the, you can see I've got the first edition. I think the third edition is currently in like pre-order status. Um, but anyhow, this is, oh, it's beautiful. Isn't it just? Um, but it's, it's called the Raven's Dream and each card depicts a dreamscape essentially that the raven is having and so it's got again it's got that like surreal quality to it it's also this is a digital collage would we call it collage it is collage I think I think her style has changed over time definitely um but it's it's got some collage elements and then it's it's all digitally put together and drawn and so with the style of it it's got a bit of a surreal quality to the like composition and the way the images come together but also it's it's dreamy it's dreamy it's a little bit weird and wonderful it's a little bit spooky scary in the way that dreams are this is one of my favorite queen of swords cards i love it the way she's overseeing it's so good and so this also feels like it fits with that kind of slightly ungrounded, slightly surreal quality, which I guess if we're talking about the descent, uh, my first thought obviously is, is Persephone's descent into the underworld for the winter. Uh, but my personal descent would be that kind of, I feel a little bit less grounded. I feel a little bit less real. I feel a little bit less part of the world and a little bit more inward facing I suppose and this deck just really suits that it really it feels like it really reflects that 
because it's it's also a little bit kind of untethered like we've got animals this is all and like again with the other collage deck it's all real things but it's put together in such a way that feels not quite as you'd expect and so instead of the like sometimes quite harsh bright very real very very present kind of summer energy that is a little bit intense and overwhelming sometimes it's like it's a little bit off kilter almost so yeah does that make sense maybe this is a good deck for doing some of that like exploration because it is a bit weird and wonderful it's absolutely not a rider white smith clone in the imagery like in no way is it traditional it's not what you'd expect like we've got some of the elements there like this is the two of pentacles we've got our raven is is balancing and everything's on fire in the tower but like it's not what you'd expect to see like this page of cups is very different from your average page of cups and so it does kind of make you think and you've got to look at things in a slightly different way and I really like the guidebook for this I really like all of MJ Kalanay's guidebooks but um it's really enjoyable to kind of pull a card and sit at it and think okay how in the hell is that a nine of wands and maybe come up with my own little narrative for it and think okay well are we guarding something from these two other birds are we taking something from these two other birds it's that kind of kind of anticipating an attack that you get from the nine of wands so like sure it makes sense as the nine of wands it's just taking a slightly different route it's a little bit more uh like more complex i suppose it's not complicated but it is a little bit more complex like there's a bit more a bit more of a, a winding route to get there so i love these aces i think they're so good um yeah the raven's dream definitely definitely a deck for the descent okay i've got a couple of decks that i actually haven't used very much next so where the ritual and the raven's dream were decks that i have used and i know fit this kind of time of year and fit the kind of mood that i can anticipate that i'll be in and and respond to that uh, the next couple of decks are more so decks that i particularly intend to use this this dark season uh, and this is the circle of doors tarot this is pretty brand new to my collection um i have flipped through it i've pulled a couple of cards but i've not done any like readings with it yet uh this oh my goodness it's huge but i okay there's something about like a huge deck that i'm actually coming around to i love a pocket deck i love a mini but like the ritual is also pretty big one of the other decks i'm going to show you is also huge so like I don't know there's like a gravitas to it maybe that also I think you know what I think there's something there um this is a black and white photography multiple exposure deck um and I am seriously excited to work with this so full disclaimer this was sent to me by the creators they got in touch and asked if I would like to receive a copy and kind of work it into rotation and I remember seeing Natalia's review tarot shrink and I was like that's extremely cool and so I jumped on it when they offered I was like absolutely yes please that's the backstory the reason this deck is in this video <laughs> is um partly because there's like multiple exposure also it's that kind of slightly surreal slightly unreal kind of dreamy but dreamy in the sense that nothing quite makes sense and like a dream can also be a nightmare like that kind of sense of dreamy like it's just a little bit like you've got to be on your guard in, in a way I don't know that that necessarily translates to to any of these tarot decks in particular but that translates to my like feeling about winter is like hey maybe that nine of wands was really speaking to me then I just feel like you've got to be a little bit or at least I I've got to be a little bit I've got to be anticipating I've got a little bit on guard in the winter because it's tough so this has that multiple exposure kind of unreal kind of kind of dreamy kind of you sit with it and you go into it kind of artwork um also not gonna lie the color palette is extremely like it's it's dark <laughs> it's dark and shadowy <laughs> um it fits just just based on vibes um this is so very beautiful 
I'm still kind of ooing and ahhing over this deck because I sat, I like flipped through it, I gave it a shuffle, I pulled a couple cards, I've read a couple guidebook entries, but it's still like new and shiny. And some cards are just extremely impactful. I will also say this looks better in real life than it does on video in my opinion. I liked it obviously over screen images, but I think this is one that just I like it more in person, which is, you know, delightful. Much better that than the other way around. But the other reason this feels good for this like darker, shadowy, introspective, self-reflective season is the guidebook. And it is because I love the way this guidebook is laid out. So for instance, here with the Six of Keys, description of, of the card meaning. And then there's this paragraph here with like questions that you can ask yourself. So I think this would be a really good deck for doing some like journaling with. I haven't used it that way myself yet. Um, but that I really like, we've got an affirmation. But then it's this, it's this little verse that um, just seriously gets me with this deck. It kind of, what, I think it was the seven. Yeah, it was the seven of keys. Cause I saw this image and I was like, not entirely sure how that's a seven of wands. So I looked in the guidebook and I was like, well, I like this, this is great. But it was this, why is getting what I asked for so irritating? And I read that sentence and I thought about it in the context of the seven of, of wands. And I was like, holy shit. So um, instantly I was like, this is, this is, yes, I'm excited to work with this. And um, when I flipped through, I really like these little verses. And the writer of the deck is not the same as the creator of the images. Here we go. So the concept, and it, it was also, you can kind of see here in the book, it was also an installation at like, I think it was like a Burning Man festival. Um, but the, the deck was created by Anne Stavely and Jill Sutherland. And then the guidebook was written by Brian Duffy. And I do not know Brian Duffy. I want to sort of have a look and see what else he's maybe written or just been up to. Um, but anyway, I love this guidebook. I like the cards, I like the images. I love the images. These keywords are also really good. Like they're not, um, this is beautiful. Can we just, <laughs> like for a black and white image, and not that black and white images can't be beautiful, but I tend to gravitate towards color when I'm looking at something. So my recent kind of love affair with black and white decks has been really interesting to go through. But um, like, it's it's stunning. It's stunning. Um, what was I saying? I love the images, even though it's real people. And that's interesting for me as well. But I really like some of these keywords. I think the three of cups is coven. And then shells is pentacles. So we've got the nine of shells is, is the nine of pentacles equivalent. Um, arrival, I think that's really good. Our courts have been renamed. This is so very beautiful. The cup suit is just gorgeous. Anyway, I'm jumping about because I'm excited. I think visually this feels very appropriate for the dark and shadowy season, but this guidebook I think is gonna be so good to kind of take with me on this descent as it were. I'm really excited to just dig into this some more. Like I say, I haven't done a spread or like a real reading with this deck yet. I've just done the occasional card pull to just kind of get comfy with it, if that makes sense. Does anyone else do that? Like I've, I've pulled a few cards, I've read a few entries, but it's literally just been like a, I've not been taking it as having a meaning. I've just been kind of practicing almost <laughs> with this deck. Um, but I'm really excited to sort of read properly with it. Yeah, like some of these verses, the, the perspective that they've got on the card is just so good. And so I'm, I'm very excited to get into this. And like I say, I think this is gonna be such a good guidebook to kind of guide me through the, the dark shadowy season. So that is the circle of doors. And then here I have the death doula. She's upside down. So the death doula felt like such a no brainer for the descent for the dark and shadowy season, right? Because a death doula is somebody who helps sort of guide you through the transition from life to death. Especially right now, like this is going up on the equinox, we're right at this like transitional season. 
And so this just felt like such a no-brainer. And then I also realized this also has that like multiple exposure photography, same as the, the Circle of Doors did. These are also identical in size. So I really want to use them together. I think that would be really cool. Um, and this is another deck that I haven't actually worked with this very much. I got this, my partner got this for me in I think like April. I've just not used it much. The time has not quite felt right. And I think the time feels right now. It's just too perfect with this, with this tag, with this decks for the descent. This is one of those decks that's on this list because I want to work with it in the coming months, in the darker half of the year. And it's, I just think it's very well suited for that. I love some of these keywords. Um, I did an unboxing for this that never made it to YouTube because I kind of hated it <laughs> when I was editing. I was like, no, I don't, I don't like this. Um, the vibes were off. Uh, so you never got my, my gushing over keywords, but I really love some of the keywords in this deck. I think it's so cool. I like calcination. And the, um, the guidebook is small but I think small but mighty, possibly. I haven't read it cover to cover yet. It's also got loads of like rituals and exercises and like practices to, to, to do, to try out. So I think this also, like this one, I thought this guidebook could be a good sort of a book to guide me through the descent. And I think this one too, I mean, that's literally what a death doula is, is somebody who kind of helps with that transition, who helps you come to terms with that transition. I think that that is a good sort of attitude to take through the darker half of the year. You know, it's hard. It's it's hard to exist in winter sometimes. And there's like a little bit of a, a, a personal mini micro death grief sort of thing that's happening as you're watching everything around you get like cold and gray and <laughs> all the plants die. <laughs> So, and it can bring up, it can bring up some like tricky stuff, um, I know for many people. And so this feels appropriate. It feels like a way to practice resilience maybe, and like practice coping essentially. And um, yeah, so that's the death doula. Sort of stopped talking about that very abruptly. Um, I also haven't worked this one much, so I don't have too much to say, but um, I am looking forward to working with these two together because they're the exact same size and they both have that multiple exposure photography. I just think they could be really cool. But I haven't actually worked with either of them in any real depth. So I'm hoping this winter I will get to know both of these. All right, finally, this is actually quite a short little desk deck list. This is only the fifth one. I've got the Reclaim Oracle. It's a feelings deck. I've spoken at length that, um winter feelings are hard. <laughs> winter feelings are hard. I know I am not the only one. And um, especially if I'm going to be doing some like, like internal complex shadow work type stuff that I feel a little bit drawn to in the winter and that I at least feel the winter is suited for that kind of thing. It's good to have this kind of deck on hand. I've spoken at length and very recently in my only 10 decks video, this is such a functional tool for me. When I mentioned the idea of practicing coping with the death doula, this is one of those decks that I have a practice with. It is a tool to get through uh, difficult feelings, to sort out how I'm feeling when I don't know how I'm feeling and to help me kind of verbalize to myself what the fuck is going on. Uh, like I mentioned, I feel a little bit ungrounded, a little bit untethered in the winter. And this being a physical thing is really helpful as a tool for kind of regrounding. Because even if I can sort through how I'm feeling in my head and I can have a conversation out loud with myself or even with another person, there's something about having a physical tool to physically sort through my thoughts and feelings with that is just really, really helpful and I find it so valuable as a practice and um, as a tool. So this was such a no brainer. It's dark, it's cold, it's gloomy. My brain is dark and cold and gloomy. And sometimes I need a little bit of a hand sorting through what the hell is going on in there. Uh, but also along with some of these, you know, darker, shadowier, we do like a hermit in the winter and we do a hermit in the sense of like literally the hermit card, it's a bit of a, personal spiritual hike 
and then you get to the top and it's cold and you're on your own and like winter can feel like that sometimes I mean any kind of personal journey feels like that sometimes but winter especially so when the outside matches the inside it can be a little bit tougher to get through and so this is a really it's such a valuable tool for me uh, this one is currently I don't know if it will still be funding when I publish this video but the fourth edition of this is currently on Kickstarter and I imagine if you miss the Kickstarter there will be additional decks that she'll have that you can sort of buy so this one's been out of print for a bit but a new edition is coming. This is like the the aftercare <laughs> of this video. I've got some like slightly surreal dark and spooky stuff, I've got some 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 deep shadowy personal complex work and then I've got this to kind of hold on to literally and sort of come back to come back to reality with. All right so that is my my short mm, small probably not short video but small collection of decks for the descent in response to Green Eye Tarot like I say I will link her and her video in the description. Uh, let me know what your decks for the descent are, let me know what your descent is like. Also if you're in the southern hemisphere I'm jealous that you're getting longer days for one, but um, how's your practice changing up? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for spending some time with me. I really hope you've enjoyed. Give me a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.